It is the moment of truth. We have let this brisket rest for two hours and now we're going to unwrap it and see what we have. Welcome back to the Midlife Ride. My name is Chris. Catherine is behind the camera this very early Saturday morning. And you might be asking, why are you up so early on a Saturday morning? That's because we're up for a brisket redemption video. Because if you watched our last brisket video, you'd know what an utter fail that was. It is way over time. Not a complete fail we did salvage some of it but mostly a fail and it's just one of those videos that goes to show you can never be overconfident when it comes to cooking barbecue whether you're using an offset smoker or something simple like a pellet grill which is what we're using today we'll be using our traeger pellet grill i learned my lessons i'm going to cook this brisket at 225 for the duration of the cook we're going to use just a really simple rub of salt and pepper, and we are going to be using oak pellets today. The brisket we have is a little over 16 pounds. It's USDA prime brisket that we got at Costco. So we're gonna get it out of the fridge, trim it up really quick, get it rubbed, get the grill going, and then get that brisket on the grill. <laughs> And also, because beef tallow and brisket is all the rage right now, I am going to attempt to make our own beef tallow today while the brisket is cooking. And hopefully, with any luck, it'll be ready before I wrap it in the butcher paper. And to make beef tallow, it's really just about rendering this these scrap pieces of fat over really low heat for a while until it renders out and then straining it. So we'll see how it goes. I've never made it before, but it seems pretty simple to do. And if it's not ready for today, then we'll have it ready for in the future. Okay, so the brisket is all trimmed up. We have it rubbed up with our salt and pepper. I'm gonna let that sit out for at least an hour. That's something you can safely do with beef as opposed to something like pork or poultry. But now I'm gonna get my grill going. And like I said, we're gonna cook at 225 today. I will have a water pan in there for the duration of the cook to try to help keep some moisture in the cook chamber. But uh, we're gonna get this fired up and finally have a cup of coffee, I think. All right, so it's been a little bit over an hour since we rubbed the brisket. So it's been sitting out, coming up to room temperature. Our grill is heated up to 225, which is what we'll be cooking at today, because like I said, I learned my lesson. Every grill is different. Yours may be different from mine. Trying to cook one at 275 was way too hot on my grill. So I'm gonna drop it down to 225. We're gonna put it on with the point toward the chimney stack. I have my water pan in there already. And then once we get it on, we're just gonna wait about three hours and then come back out and check it then. And that's it, we'll see you in three hours. We are about three hours into our cook now and for the very first time, we're going to open the lid of the Traeger to see what the brisket looks like. Now, when we do this, we're gonna do a couple of things. We're probably gonna spritz it with a combination of apple cider vinegar and water. And then, because I'm gonna play this one really safe, I'm going to start monitoring the temperature of the flat and the point, because what I really wanna do is wrap this brisket when it gets to around the 160 mark. All right, that is looking, that is actually looking pretty good. But I'm also going to spritz it with this apple cider vinegar and water, which is really like 
a four to one mixture. And the reason we do this, we don't want the bark to dry out. So that's enough of that. I'm going to put probe one right into the point and we are going to put probe two right into the flat. I'm going to close the lid because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So let's see what we have right now as far as the reading goes. It is showing, still kind of evening out, but showing 144 on the point, 147 on the flat. So we have, I'll probably, I'm gonna guess probably an hour, maybe two before we get to 160. But we will see, and this is why it's so important to, to keep measurement of your internal temperature because this is, this is a lot higher than I expected it to be, cooking at 225. So you just never know. That's why this is so important. Now, if you're making your own beef tallow, this is a long and slow process too. Our tallow has been going for as long as our brisket has. So it's been a little over three hours. And as you can see, all that fat, and there's still a ways to go, but all that fat is turning into those kind of cracklings. And I'm really hoping this is done before we have to wrap our brisket because I really want to uh, bind the butcher paper with some of this tallow. But just remember, at this point, if you are making your own tallow, number one, it's a really great way to make use of all those scraps and trimmings from your brisket. I mean, you're spending 50 to $70 on a brisket, but you're trimming away probably 20 bucks of it. This is a great way to make use of it. But just remember at this point, you are dealing with hot oil. So handle it carefully when you're doing this. Now, normally I would recommend letting this beef tallow cool down a little bit before you start straining it, but we are getting really close to the wrap point of the brisket, and I really want to use this before we wrap it. So what we're gonna do is very carefully ladle some of the oil out of the pot and into the strainer, and we're using a coffee filter to strain out little bits and pieces that are left over because we want pure liquid. And this is also known as Texas butter. And I am really looking forward to seeing what this does to the brisket. And just to reiterate, be very, very careful when you are handling this stuff. We have been letting this go on a low heat for this entire time, and it's really important to do that. You don't want to crank up the heat to try and make this go faster because you're just going to end up with a really bad situation, potentially. So just like your brisket on beef tallow, go low and go slow. We are around four and a half hours into our cook and we are up into the 160s on an internal temperature on our brisket right now. And now is when I'm going to wrap. And just in time, in the nick of time, we have our beef tallow done. And what I'm going to do, we're going to wrap the brisket in red butcher paper. But before I do that, I'm going to put some beef tallow onto the surface where the brisket will be touching before we wrap it. So let's go ahead and get it nice and coated. And this will help apparently help keep some moisture into that brisket, which is what we really want because we do not want all that hard work on the uh, bark to go away. So let's go get, can you tell I'm in a hurry? So let's go get the brisket off the grill. So let's take another look. If I was wrapping based on color, I would not have wrapped yet, 
but it just goes to show you just don't know. That's why we're going by the internal temperature today. So we'll take the probes out, get our brisket off, close the lid so we don't lose any heat, and we'll go get this sucker wrapped up. And we have it wrapped as tight as we can with the butcher paper. Let's go back out to the grill. All right, and we're going back on the grill the same way we took it off. We have the point toward the smokestack, the flat toward the other end. Same temperature, 225. And with the way it's going, I I think I'll probably check the temperature again in another couple of hours. We're going up to 203. That's the target temperature today. So uh, yeah, we'll check it in another couple of hours and see where we're at. It has been another two hours since we wrapped our brisket, which means it's been around seven hours total so far. So we're going to do a few things right now. Number one, we're going to check the level of our pellets. I filled up the hopper all the way when we started. And you can see it's probably, I don't know, it's emptied quite a bit, but we're still okay. The other thing I'm doing right now, because I might use it later, I have our reserve uh, beef tallow sitting here next to the grill to keep it liquefied because it starts to solidify really quickly. I also want to do a quick spot check for the temperature. And when we wrapped it, we were around on an average of 165 in between the flat and the point. And remember, we're looking for 203 for the finished brisket. So right there, just poking through, it's around the 191 mark. And let's go in through the flat. And it too is around the 191 mark. So we're going to shut the lid and check it in about, I'm going to set a timer for another hour. And it might be done around then, but we'll, we'll see. Almost a 203 on the point. It's been around eight hours total and you can't argue with the internal temperature. So cooked a lot faster than I thought it was going to, but just goes to show you, you never know. So we're going to take it off let it rest for at least an hour, maybe two, and then it'll be the moment of truth. It is the moment of truth. We have let this brisket rest for two hours. So let's see what we have. There's definitely a lot of moisture in there. That is for sure. It's a little bit jiggly, which is what you want to see. And it is glistening. I wish the bark was a little bit darker, but hey, let's, uh, Start slicing into it and see what we have here. That looks good. Cut into the flat first. I see a smoke ring. Yep, definitely a smoke ring. Just doing uh, like quarter inch slices so far. We'll check on the pull test. I'm not going to go any further right there. Let's try this piece. Take a look at it. It's certainly floppy, which is what you want, but let's try the pull test. It should be able to pull apart easily. I wouldn't say it's easy. It's not as tender as you would want um, based on the pull test, but it's, it isn't bad. Um, let's taste it and see what we have. The brisket is certainly moist. It, it is not dry, it is done. It might be a little bit overdone, if anything. Thank goodness I monitored the temperature the entire time because if I didn't, it would have been way overdone. It is a very tricky thing to cook brisket in the first place, but it is especially tricky to cook it on a Traeger grill. Let's cut into the point and see what we have here. I mean, you can see that the fat has rendered, for the most part, there's still a pretty hefty vein of fat running through there. 
Oh, and look, I got a nice little burnt end there. Let's try this nice little burnt end. Save me some, please. Can you see that on my lips? <laughs> yes. That's pretty good. I wouldn't get you on camera trying it though. Now I'm going to try the flat part because Chris is forcing me to be on camera even though I haven't showered. Sorry about it. I like it. I mean, I still remember the fail and having to stomach that. Now I'm gonna try a burnt end. Can you see that? Looks delicious. Mmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is. It is very delicious. I feel like I can really taste that tallow. Is that what it was called? That tallow, I think, adds a little oiliness, not greasiness, but a little bit of flavor. I mean, like adding olive oil to something. You can taste it, but it's not like overwhelming. It's Texas butter. Good job, honey. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little notification bell so that you know every time we release a new video. And we will see you on the next episode of The Midnight Friday. <laughs>